Hey. Hey. Uh, hey. Hey, how are you? What's up? Stand up to cancer, y'all. It was either by a pen or... This isn't a pen, actually. It's a magnet. Look. It's got a little magnet on the back of it. So I could pull it right off and stick it right there. Of course, then you couldn't see it. Oh, no, what happened? Anyway. Oh, man. It's Friday, and I, I gave up. I slept. I slept in. I slept very late. In fact, I had a meeting. Who has a meeting on Friday, anyway? I had one meeting, and I missed it. I hope none of those people are watching this, though. Because I'm not even sure they noticed I wasn't there. That's what kind of week it's been. The longest four-day week in the world. Ugh. But, it's over now. Mostly. Thank goodness. It's Friday. At least left me another message. Uh explaining herself for leaving her husband for an entire weekend and going to Seattle. But I get the sense that I need to talk about the, the state fair before... Oh, I have some coffee left, too. This is very old. Don't do what I do. Oh, I feel myself per perking up already. Uh, it's currently 6.52 p.m. Uh, it, it's late in the day, but not late in my day. I still actually have a little bit of work left to do, but... I wanted to do this and get it out there so that by the time I do have to leave, I've already uploaded this and it's all taken care of. You don't care about any of this stuff. It's all behind the scenes minutiae. So the State Fair uh, went three times, as uh, we are wont to do. I went the first day. Uh, unfortunately, Kim was working that day, so there wasn't a lot that I did. But I hung out with her parents, and I got to see all the exhibits that he did. Uh, I think they were all stamps this year. It was kind of an uh, artful display of stamps uh, of note and put together in a nice package with a good theme. And I think he ribboned uh, on all of them. And in fact, I think he was four for five. I'll have to go back and check my photos. Four for five uh, blue ribbons and one red ribbon. Being first and second. He also got the jackpot, big, big old trophy for a really cool display of duck stamps. Um, I forget what the award was. I have a picture of that too. All the stuff's on Facebook. No, it isn't. I don't think I uploaded them to Facebook. You can't see them. You got to be related, part of the family. But a big trophy named after some guy, some memorial trophy, and every year he manages to find. And display uh, just enough stamps that people are really interested in them and, and, and like them. And they actually are probably quite valuable and shouldn't be displayed, even though they are behind glass in a state fair building where it would probably be pretty easy to heist them. But you didn't hear that from me. Uh, so anyway, you don't care about that, any of that, really. You're, you're more interested in the food. The food. I had the poutine. And I Instagrammed it to prove that I did. The poutine was new to the fair, and it was probably classic poutine, as long as you're from whichever province the sign said, whatever style it was. Basically, you know, fries, gravy, very brown, very, very gravy, and a lot of uh, black pepper in it. Black pepper kind of dominated the whole thing, in fact. Not as many cheese curds as I would have liked. But when I'm at the State Fair, I'm used to getting my just deep-fried cheese curds, and that's all cheese curds. So when you get fries and gravy and cheese curds, and you're expecting cheese curds, you're probably not going to get the ratio you want. So really, you got to skip that. So it was okay. I don't know if I'll get it again or not next year. It was I had it. It was okay. I, it's almost like a food I could make at home, really, though. So... I don't know. I couldn't get Kim interested in trying it, so that was the food I had by myself. Uh, Lisa asks if I saw a lot of Annapals, and we did hit the Miracle of Birth Center, which is where all the pregnant animals are, and then they give birth. 
once again, fortunately, we were not uh, timing our visit to coincide with any actual live births, although they're always playing replays on the big TVs in there. We didn't watch that, though. So we looked at the goat babies, of course, the cow babies, the baby chicks, the baby ducks. There were some bunnies. And then we had to hold our breath as we walked by the pigs because everyone's paranoid about swine flu. And yet, they were still displaying. Uh, I think that was it for the babies. Yeah. There was also a, a cute little lamb, which I did take a picture of and post to Facebook. It's kind of sleeping and cute. And that really is all the, lamb, all the babies we saw. The highlight of the fair is the alpaca booth. But unfortunately, the alpacas moved. So the first day, I went where the alpacas, I had to go straight for where the alpacas were so I could get a photo of them. And it was a stroller parking lot. Can you believe it? I found out later that actually they had moved. I didn't find them the first day, though. I had to go consult the website, which actually didn't help. I had to actually go to the Alpaca Foundation or whoever runs that place. Is it the Minnesota Alpaca? I don't know. But the second day and the third day, we did go visit the alpacas. And I am still the mayor of alpacas. If I am the mayor of nothing else at the fair, I will always be the mayor of alpacas. You can go to Foursquare and confirm that. Uh, for food, fried pickles, the fried pickle slices, one of my favorite things at the fair. Cheese curds, of course. The thing I tried this year besides the poutine, and I couldn't get Kim on, in on it, but I read the description and it was something I had to have. The super stick at Spaghetti Eddie's. What Spaghetti Eddie did was he took pepperoni slices and chunks of cheese. He coated them. He put them on a shish kebab skewer, coated them with a garlic batter, deep fried it, and then served it with marinara sauce. And it was exactly what you think it would be. And it was too much for one guy, but I ate it anyway. <clears throat> Even thinking about it now, I just. Brings carbonation to the forefront. Actually made one of my super stick photos the W banner of the day, but I don't think anybody said anything about it or even noticed, but that's what that was. Then we have the spam curds, of course, which are cubes of spam cut up to look like cheese curds battered and deep fried. And that came with a ranch dressing to, to dip it in. And I really like that. I really like having that once. The Spam house had some really good merchandise, some really interesting shirts. And I forgot to go back later to see if they were having any end of the fair sales. So uh, I suspect I could go to the Spam Museum website and buy all that stuff, probably a lot cheaper than even getting it at the fair. Will I remember to do that? Does the Spam Museum even have a website? What do you think, Google? The only other thing, I think was, there was some other new item I really wanted to try. Oh, no, I did. It was bacon ice cream. I know that because there is also an Instagram of that somewhere and a Facebook photo of me pointing at the bacon ice cream sign and going, oh, can you believe this exists? And it was okay. Unfortunately, it was heavily maple flavored, so the bacon wasn't very bacony. And I think that would have made it even more interesting. Spam.com slash spam dash 101 slash the dash spam dash museum. That must have been a redirect. I did not type that in. I typed in spammuseum.com and it came up. Hooray! Do you have a store? Gear and gifts. Oh, yeah. Just like everything else, Spam's original old logo is so much better than its current one. The lesson to learn here is to never change your logo. Having said that, have you noticed that all 322 SB Nation blogs are going to have new logos that kind of all look the same? I don't know how I feel about that. I don't spend lots of time there, but enough to, I guess, notice it and mention it to you. Um, I think that was it for food. Oh, no, we did have a spinach artichoke wood-fired pizza slice. That was good, too. And Kim had something that I wanted no part of, and now I can't remember what it was. So eh, not a super experimental year, really. 
the problem was that Kim and I were by ourselves so much. Usually we go in larger groups so we can buy more food because we shared amongst ourselves. But we ended up kind of full and kind of not getting as much food as we normally would get. So that's the food tale from the State Fair. No big concerts this year like there was uh, in previous years. No big events that we had to do. Uh, no big merchandise that I bought. Although, now that I think about it, I have a stuffed animal from the Miracle of Birth Center. Kim still has it. She has to give it to me so I can bring it here and show it to you. I don't know why I'm looking around. It's not in here. It's at home. Yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Oh, no, we did the Chicago dog thing like we always do. That's how I got full, because you end up with an enormous pickle in addition to the pickle spear that they put in the Chicago dog, because they make true Chicago dogs there with all the horrible, horrible ingredients that aren't any good, but I eat them anyway because it's the Chicago dog experience. I'm already way over time. Was there anything else I was supposed to talk about? Animals and food. State Fair. If I had let the State Fair go anymore, I surely would have forgotten. Fox Sports North had a deal where you could read off their teleprompter and do a promo. And they have digitized everyone who visited their thing except mine. I went there the first day, and like they did some kind of process where they encoded it in a way that causes them to take hours and hours to re-encode it, to upload it to their site. So I'm hopeful that it'll eventually show up there and I can still share it with you. Because I did a bang-up job reading their teleprompter. It was going at a normal speed, unlike the WCCO one. But all we have right now are a couple pictures that Kim took while I was doing it. Uh, I bring that up because I thought I was really good, and I want to share it with you, but it's not up yet. So, Fox Sports North, screwing me for years. Because, you know, they weren't showing Timberwolves games all the time either. 56 days, oh my goodness, you know what that means. Exactly eight weeks until October 2nd. Is that right? Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm at November 2nd for the opening tip-off of the regular season of the Timberwolves, and I'm very excited. There's probably so much that I still need to say, but hopefully by Monday it will all have faded away from my memory and I will have forgotten it. But if anything's really important, you can always ask me again. You know how to reach me. Twitter here, Facebook over there, the W message board, and our week is over. Thank God. Thank you for watching, though. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope it was marginally entertaining and not a complete waste of your time. That's all we ever strive for here. So from Roseville, Minnesota, I am out until Monday. Hopefully. Uh, I love you, and in case I don't see you again, um, I'll haunt you later. Bye.